close of the ocean where our hope sank searching for you. Moving through the silence without motion, waiting for you. In a room with no window in the corner, I found the truth. In this shadow play, I can at your own death, knowing no more. As the assassins all grouped in four lines, dancing on the floor. With a cold steel on her on the bodies, made a move to connect. I could only stare in disbelief as the crowds all left. To the center of the city in the night, waiting for you. To the center of the city in the night, waiting for you. You, 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 you.
Okay, this is a wee tutorial on how to play um, my version of Shadow Play, which, as you can tell, is not very consistent necessarily. But um, anyway, I'll give you the basic idea of what I do. I just kind of start with the the bass line of the actual song. So the song is kind of very simple in E minor. The original is kind of like you know C. So I'm just doing the bass line all on the uh, sixth string, as you can tell. And uh, then the next part, um, I start to include some kind of over ringing signs. So I do the um, a C up on the fourth string, tenth fret, um, and then combined with the the open G string kind of gives you like a C chord and then I move when I move up to the 10th fret for the D it's um, there's a little bit of dissonance but it also gives you kind of like kind of like a D7 chord you know so it goes um, So anyway, we'll give you some basic ideas. You basically add your pinky there to the the G sharp on the eleventh fret of the uh, the fifth string, and that gives you a nice uh, strange dissonance um, because you have like the overhanging C. That makes it like a little bit like a um, an augmented chord, a little spacey, you know. So let me show you that again. Now what it's got too, it's got a clash between the the G natural of the open string that I play for the C chord. It's got this kind of like G sharp, so it gives you a little bit of a kind of a bluesy uh, dissonance, that kind of thing. Which is a big part of blues stuff is having the major third underneath, but then having this kind of minor third. Kind of stuff, so um, it's got a little bit of the, both of those dissonances, which is it doesn't look like it has that because you're just putting two fingers down. But I'm I'm wanting those signs. So you see, it's got this kind of disturbing, but, but beautiful, and all of my guitar strings are ringing except the top E string. Um, so uh, then we have the kind of the main little figure that I use, um, which is just from, I guess, kind of ideas that I've used um, before I kind of formed a band. Um, ideas that I used for doing like traditional Irish music and also in classical guitar. You know, and I've talked about this on previous tutorials, where you can do something that is a, um, a sequence of notes, and instead of just playing them and stopping the notes on the frets, um, it's only, you know, that's what I'm playing, but when I do it like this, I'm letting the strings kind of overlap each other. So I'm playing the open E and the open B, and then instead of playing a C and A here, I'm playing them here on the 
fifth fret and on the seventh fret. And I'm having to use these two fingers because I want to be able to play the bass note with my third finger. And I have to do it with my third finger because I have to continue the sequence um, like this. So two open strings, then five and seven. And then the two open strings, uh, the second and the third string, and then the fourth and the fifth string, seven and nine. So if I play it without the bass line, it might be more clear. So I'm always trying to overcome this on the guitar, that it's very difficult to play kind of connected in, in, in a, what you would call in um, classical music like legato or cantabile, whatever. I can't use those words, it's a little pretentious, but uh, the things that make it sound a little like a harp, I guess, that's what I'm trying to use. People in classical guitar, they'll call it campanella as well, which is just Spanish for like bells. It sounds kind of like bells. So, um, so the hardest thing to do on the guitar is to make it legato like that, or to make it over, to make it connected, because once you touch a string, the note stops, right? And once you take your finger away from a string, the note stops. So it's very easy to make notes stop on the guitar, but to make them um, ring together is more difficult, so. So I'm just keeping that sequence going. And I'm doing the same bass line as before, that the song has, you know, C. Now, obviously, like if you're not experienced um, with having good right hand technique, this is going to be very difficult. And I would definitely encourage you to look at the kind of finger picking tutorial, um, kind of core position stuff, and the other stuff in your thumb angle and all that stuff so you just don't hurt yourself because we're doing very repetitive things here and you need to make sure that you're as relaxed as possible um, but the right hands you know even though it's not easy if you're a beginner but um, it's quite simple um, As he examines what he's doing so we can learn it. So I'm basically doing it in core position and I'm going A, M, I and then a, a, a note with I on the next string. So, so it's like if we number the strings one, two, three, four, it's going first string, second string, third string and then I bring the same finger down to the fourth string. And then I do the same pattern, only I'm starting on the second string. So I go A, M, I, I again, but on this kind of secondary chord position. basically it you know um, obviously you have to get that just like anything you get it um, with a in, in this kind of automatic way just like when you're uh, uh, playing chords as a kid and you play you know you strum it and you learn the strumming pattern you learn the chords and kind of just uses automatic pilot <clears throat> and then you're just trying to kind of sing, you know, and, and treat it as if it's just a kind of a finger-picking pattern. Obviously, it's a bit, you know, 
grotesquely complicated compared to other things like that. But but if you do enough, you know, I just have those things just from playing classical guitar, um, those kind of skills. So then there's, um, I think that's basically the main part of it. Um, and then I have a little segue things that I do, um, which uh, I think the other thing that I do is... Um, Similar, I'm just getting a C major chord to a D major chord. That's what I'm thinking, at least in the bass. And then instead of resolving it to E minor, I'm resolving it to this E major with, you know, that may have overhangs of, of kind of G naturals as well. So what I do, um, I do the, it's just a lick. Um, I'm using the open strings with them with this G up here on. 12th fret of the, the third string. So it's kind of that kind of thing. And then what I'm doing is I'm bending that. And if you get a couple of happy accident harmonics there, it's nothing to be ashamed of there. And uh, the thing that you need to do physically there, which is important, and that kind of thing, because it's an acoustic guitar, it's the strings are a little thicker. You need to kind of get some helper fingers behind that. Because it's quite a band, you could just do it with your pinky. And if you could, it wouldn't be something you would brag about. Um, I'm just trying to actually learn the song as I'm showing it to you here um, so then the other thing that I do is uh, I go back to the verse um, and I sing just in that kind of lower voice um, and then I kind of do a, a, a couple of like just little expressive codas you know um, I just think of this song when I play this song to me it's like a you know it's like an elegy to uh, Ian Curtis you know so I just kind of think about him you know I think about kind of those types of people you know um, I guess anomalies in the um, pop music world those people I would consider to be kind of real artists you know um, who are like reluctant singers you know reluctant songwriters um, so I'm just trying to the, the rest of it that comes out are just things that were kind of, you know, like emotional um, little coda type segue things um, so I guess I guess I kind of made up this little thing sing with the guitar this little melody there's an A here on the um, fourth string and then it goes to the open G and then an F sharp on the four, on the uh, ninth fret of the fifth string and then the open D string just like that and then with the bass line and also with my A finger, I'm plucking the I'm plucking the open E string. So so something's going on musically there. Um, maybe like a little bit of a miniature band thing, something that you would hear. Um, Maybe like the guys in Interpol do, or um, I don't know, like Arcade Fire or something, I guess, like a, some kind of miniaturized. But what's happening there musically is I've got um, a little bit of ambiguity with the harmony because we're used to the C chord, you know? But 
then there's this A in it, which is giving you like an inverted A minor chord. And then the E on top of the D chord is giving you this kind of like overhanging, you know, this kind of suspension. So it's like this. That's just something to think about in your writing or arranging, is having things that stay um, a little bit stubbornly, not like um, gruesome dissonance, but functional dissonance. Things that stay and when you change chords, they kind of stubbornly remain and produce a kind of, uh, a, kind of a yearning dissonance, you know, something that doesn't belong. So, and then the same thing happens then when um, it goes to the E chord because then we have a, like a suspended, you know, it's like a, it's like an A in the middle of an E chord, just like if, if you did this. So you have that kind of thing. If I just played them as normal chords, it would be like... Instead of just going to the the E and resolving there, I go to kind of like a B minor chord. So it's just like a like a B par chord or whatever there, like like on the seventh and ninth fret. <laughs> and again, you have a little bit of a suspension because the open E string is the. So it's so that's why that little thing has that's where the emotional kind of par is from it from those non chord tones that you're overhanging and you don't have to be like a whiz to, to do that you just have to listen for things like that and kind of try them but sometimes when you're finger picking things you can stumble upon things like that easier because you can choose certain voicings and avoid certain strings and not be um, just you know stuck on these uh, kind of auto harp chords you know it lets you do voicings you know like more like a composer would or in a movie or something are going somewhere like lines and start to sound like uh, spinal tap or simple lines intertwining kind of a mock piece and then after that I do kind of extrapolation of that too where um kind of pedal point thing a bit like that Radiohead song it goes like which is kind of a you know like a classical type move you know really what I'm doing is I'm just introducing this second string
harmonic effects that you would have like in a, in a band in the bands that I like you know like Radiohead or Interpol or Joy Division you know and some sometimes um, although their um, their stuff is used is a bit more simple in the music realm um, <laughs> Same thing. I'm here. I'm just getting some. There's a, like a dissonance by having the second of the scale instead of just a normal full E minor chord. If you uh, if you just have the the triad chord, you're in danger of it being a bit boring or not having any emotional tension. So so it's like. to be here or there but it's also quite kind of beautiful and stable as well because it mixes with the, the fifth of the E minor chord which is a B so it's F sharp and B so it's almost like a, a, a little it's got its own little perfect par chord kind of interval and then um, and these these chords here are just alternatives to um, instead of just having a C and a, and a B and a D. They're they're a little bit different because they're um, the little relative minor chords inverted of those chords. So this is really an inverted A minor chord. So we've got this A, and a C in the bass. This one's kind of an inverted uh, B minor because it's got a B here and then a D in the bass. Okay, and then the other coda part, um, you know, I guess what I did originally is just kind of improvising a, a thing. It's like a technique that I use that might be a bit complicated to get into, but. It's a technique that you usually use in classical guitar for doing trills, like, you know, at the end of cadences, and, um, where you're alternating your fingers um, so they can go back and forth between two strings very quickly, a bit more easily, like a pianist can kind of use all their fingers. So it's just something I like to do. Um, so you're going back and forth between two strings very quickly. So you got your um, thumb, A, I, M, P, A, I, M. And then I'm just kind of hitting these little two note chords. So I'm going to occasionally holding off the arrival of a e, e chord. So it's mostly this kind of thing, C. But sometimes I'm kind of disappointing it by going to an A chord, some kind of A minor. Sometimes live, I'll I'll, uh, I'll just use one of my fingers to hit these two open strings because I think I just did it like accidentally at one point, and I just like the sound of that, you know. So you can kind of mess around with these different textures. I guess that's what I'm trying to do is just have a sustained sound in the middle, you know, as if you're. line still and then maybe 
some other things, you know. Just whatever the guitar can kind of give me. And it's mostly on the, the four thickest strings. If you wanted to, you could even do some little something in a live setting that's moving, you know, it's like an important thing to do. But it's, it's important to kind of, when you allow yourself to play music and you find something you like, you have to be, um, you have to try just making noises and um, let the music kind of, you know, as Eminem says, kind of lose yourself with the music, you know. <laughs> but it's true become the music um, and when I write stuff or arrange stuff you're trying to kind of hypnotize yourself into that place you know of uh, of uh, receptivity you know to your, your your deeper self you know your soul and that you're trying to let the world um, the room even kind of melt away a little bit and then what's inside you you know kind of come to the surface so it becomes less of a thing of, of, of like a performance thing you know or like what will these people think of me or what will this be boring or will this suck or you're just and you're just kind of you're allowing music to kind of happen you know so when I do a little kind of a long-winded arrangement of something like this it comes from just that kind of improvisation you know and uh, just allowing the music to happen or maybe I'll talk about stuff like that in a different video okay have a good one <laughs>